today I'm going to be talking to you about the upcoming full moon in Capricorn on the 2nd of January 2021. A clean slate, except for that, which is so not a clean slate. The full new moon in Capricorn is going to be happening on the 2nd of January, 2021. Okay. <clears throat> so as you can see, Capricorn is about organization and practicality, and that was just a prominent example uh, to show you what that energy is like. So um, the full moon in Capricorn coming up on the second is the first and the last full moon of the entire year of 2022. It is a new moon, and this new moon is happening on January 2nd. Now, when we have a new moon, the sun and the moon are in the same sign, and when that happens, they cancel each other out. When that happens, and they align in the sky, then it is a time to go inwards, metaphorically speaking, or you know, indoors, depending on your circumstances of work um, at this time. Um, but it's a time for reflection, and it's really a time to set new goals and intentions for what you want to achieve, um, you know, let's say this next coming year, and then the resolutions of all of those things that you did that last year reflect at the end of um, 2022 coming up a year from now, uh, down the line, or down the pike, as they say, um, the pike. So, um, you know, that's what you know, this new moon is about. I want to do a little shout out to a really, um, you know, really um, one of the very infamous and famous, really just popular choral composers born on January 2nd, um, Eric Whitaker. And if you listen to his songs, if you listen to particularly has this, this album, Light and Gold, it's really, really amazing what he did and the quality of his work, you know, the time and the effort and all the dynamics um, and all the little, um, you know, kinks and the, the the chords and how it all flows together in his music you know really shows you know how serious um you know an ambitious capricorn is as a sign because it doesn't settle for just things being mediocre you know it is an all-in sign um so, you know, if you hear his music, he uses cluster chords, which are basically chords, you know, but they're just on steroids. Chords that are basically one set of chords and then another set of chords. And I mean, it's amazing what he has done to put virtual choirs into motion. Um, with so many people from different parts of the world connecting and all of 
um, you know, all of his achievements and, you know, so, uh, this is happening around New Year's Day, so around the time of the new year, time to set forth, you know, new goals and intentions for this upcoming new year. What last year are you going to forego? What are you going to, you know, what are your goals this year? And it's so important to make the goals, you know, manageable and, you know, so that you can achieve them. Like instead of saying, oh, I'm going to meditate daily or as much as possible, I'm just going to do it more. You know, you live and you learn and we set those in motion, but those New Year's resolutions get put aside and probably not left and never really looked back on, you know, maybe until spring. And, you know, if I had my way and if I had my kingdom of the world, New Year's Day would be um, March 21st, because what is that initiating pioneer era's energy, a brand new start? That is the time to set forth new goals and intentions for the next upcoming year. So, you know, you, you make your New Year's resolutions now, and then you set them aside for the winter time when you go inward. And when you're more introverted and reflecting with this collective energy of Capricorn, um, Aquarius, and Pisces. Um, So we're talking very collective things. Aquarius is the humanitarian sign, being open to anyone and everyone. And, you know, really valuing um, hot topics like climate change and... Um, you know, just really creating a new world of, you know, uh, because it rules the future, rules uh, things, you know, new revelations, new revolutions, new ways of connecting, like we have technology, we have laptops, we have phones, all of these things in this Aquarian age which is something that we can tap into with that open, you know, that openness, open-heartedness and open-mindedness for others. But you know that song, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. That song was made in the 1960s when there was so much civil unrest and, you know, uh, rebellion and new revolutions because that is when the long age of Aquarius start, you know, started. Before too long, Pluto, the sign of transformation and destruction, is going to be moving into the sign of Aquarius. And let's see what happens until, you know, for, up until 2024, to 2044. There's going to be huge revolutionary years and so many things are going to be happening. But anyway, um, so the new moon, you know, we set prayers. We also pray, um, you know, that inward energy. You notice that you get to bed easier. You, you know, it's a great time to, you know, get around the fire or you know, cuddle in your close little hub with family, you know, sit in your living room, and, you know, it's the time um, to go in and, you know, uh, to yourself, and, and as I said, do that reflection. Setting new intentions. Now, um, I want to talk about the super moon because the full moon in Gemini, you know, is similar to a super moon. And what it means with a super moon is that the, the, the moon is at a closer, um, distance to the earth, you know, wherever that moon is in the sky, it is magnified pouring on, 
um, energy, pouring on energy, moon energy. And the moon is soft and quiet and uh, internal with emotions and with sensitivity and all those things. But with the full moon, it's basically, you know, Scorpio uh, emotions and Scorpio sensitivity. You take all these Cancerian things with the new moon and then you put it with the full moon, particularly in Scorpio, the um, the Taurus Scorpio full moon. And full moons can be intense and how emotional, you know, people can get around that time and all of those emotions and that, you know, wild, crazy uh, uh, energies going on. But the full moon in Scorpio is the most intense. Scorpio is the only sign that stings um, out of all of the other signs. And, um, you know, it really, you know, it's about drama and all these things. And I think it's worth mentioning that the nodes are going to be changing signs coming up um, next coming year. Um, or if you're watching this in the coming year, then maybe they would have already changed signs. And they're going to be changing into the signs, Taurus uh, and Scorpio, the nodes of the moon. Um, the south node is the collective past, our karma, where we're coming from, and what we really need to let go of. The north node is where we're going. And also, I really, really want, want to make this point, where we would naturally want to go towards, where we would want to go towards, how we would feel enlightened and better going towards this. So the South Node in Scorpio, North Node in Taurus, I have this in my chart. The South Node Scorpio um, is about you know, um, really about, you know, very scorpionic things, taboos, things that you wouldn't really talk about, secrets, and, um, you know, wealth and gaining, you know, because Scorpio also has to do, the eighth house has to do with money, you know, from other people, and um, it looks at drama, um, intensity, the, you know, the real deep, dark parts of um, human psychology and really the darker, um, you know, really the darker sides of life that, you know, a lot of times are hidden. And when Scorpio is very sexual energy and you can't go into detail about the sign of Scorpio and not acknowledge that there is, you know, sexual, and I'm not talking about the kind of thing that you think, but it's just the more delicious um, energy of Scorpio, and I mean sexual in a very broad and general sort of way. When Taurus rules the throat, and Taurus is gentle, Taurus is the earth, the simple, and we have Uranus in Taurus as well, um, which is connecting to the earth, growing plants, connecting to the land energy, getting back to, you know, those simple um, rituals and rhythms, um, which are very healing. So things very, very gentle, um, you know, earthly pleasures like food and, and warm blankets and people and connecting, um, you know, with all of that. You know, I was watching videos saying for, for the Scorpio, not relying on others for your own needs. And Taurus is about your own needs. But I want to kind of steer away from the whole, you know, money making and the job and the businessy aspect of Taurus. Because Scorpio South Node can feel like, oh, you're alone in this when the Earth energy is the connected um, energy in which says, no, you're not alone. So I think that I support that, you know, explanation of this node placement and not the other, because the other is what we're moving away from. And I think that, um, you know, and I've seen several videos and maybe not both of them, but one of them, at least one of them, was filmed in that old paradigm of, of the earth energy. 
that was shifted on the tw- the 21st of December, that transitional point, um, you know. So, yeah, Jupiter, Saturn, conjuncting air signs now, you know, for the next 200 years time, you know, new paradigm, and, yeah, you know, connecting very Aquarian things are going to come into 2030, and it'll look very, very different than you know, where we are right now. We can see this grassroots up idea. We can see people really um, coming together and realizing that, you know, it's other people that we can turn to and that we need to connect with, you know, that we need to connect with, to find it in ourselves, you know, not that isolation of, we, you know, what the Scorpio can sometimes have, because it's very secretive and all that, but that earth and that gentle sort of um, energy. Um, and how pure is money? How pure is the work and the business and the jobs compared to all of the earthly Torian things that it has to offer? Offer, <laughs> You know, not overrated in your account. Um, and, and those types of things like that, where the holidays are just something that's aside from the work and, you know, all of those things in the mainstream society. So, um, big energy, emotional truth on the full moon, very strong and very intense energy. Um, we have new year, new beginnings. Um, Jupiter moved into Pisces. Jupiter is the planet of expansion and also spiritual wisdom. It is the teacher. It is the philosopher, you know, experiencing and gaining a lot of wisdom and, you know, very um, big picture focused and wanting to, you know, really um, very enlightened and very fiery and all about luck. And also, you know, the gifts that you spread on to others, influencing their lives and all of the luck and growth that you can obtain and experience in your life. And Jupiter is, um, uh, is um, you know, an exalted, comfortable placement in Pisces because, you know, it is the ancient ruler. Pisces, you know, especially because of that, um, because Pisces is, uh, Pisces is very dreamy and very, um, spiritual and imaginatory and escaping, and, you know, it wants, you know, it has a lot of, um, it's about empathy, compassion, and also, you know, merging, um, with others and also caring for others. They're very, very, um, it's very nurturing sign Pisces. So, I mean, there's so many things going in and it could possibly be a lot of flooding. Um, cause if you think about Pisces's illusion and, uh, it can also be escapism and ungrounded, um, watery energy, and it can be overwhelming and you can get lost in it. So, anyway, um, so 2022 breaks down to a six, which is all about relationship harmony. Six is the family number. So there's going to be more connection, more um, loving. This would be a great year to focus on your family relationship and really, really um, you know, healing the aspects that don't work in, say, you know, in an area of your family. You know, great year for doing things with the family, making new memories, new traditions, and, you know, just that, um, you know, that value, that caring, and that sharing and spending time with them. Um, also, I also think that um, really uh, another important thing to talk about is on December the 22nd, mark your calendars. That is the first day of winter. That is the first official day 
of Capricorn season. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not this, I'm not that. Um, but in pagan times, on December 22nd, they would stop and acknowledge um, the beginning of a new season and the beginning day of which there would be more light. Um, so um, more light, more, you know, just um, honoring the changing of the season. So um, highlighting December 22nd as opposed to December 21st. You know, December 22nd is, you know, um, is really, um, a, uh, you know, a good day to look out for, not nearly as much as the 25th of December, um, but celebrating December 21st is an outdated Christ, uh, pre-Christian, precursor to Christianity, pagan holiday in which Stonehenge, which is a monument in London, which was a very famous pagan monument, and there's a lot of things with that, and, you know, all that happened. That is not now, and that is before Christianity. Um, so anyway, um, you know, question the narrative. If you see an ad for December 21st, winter solstice celebration, question that narrative. Capricorn energy, um, Capricorn energy. So Capricorn is the sign of the builder. Um, it is the sign of the mountain goat. And we'll look at the mountain goat symbolism um, a little bit later, but it has to do with things rooted in the earth, things practical, um, you know, Things, you know, that you can, you know, apply with the senses, like what are the tires in the car? You know, what are we having for dinner? How are we going to make money? How are we going to uh, design this? What are the steps to this? What will the, the results be? Is this worth my time and energy? I mean, you I mean all of these types of things. Getting things done, uh, um, you know, achieving things. Um, you know, just, you know, all of those things, climbing that mountain of life, um, very traditional rules, uh, Capricorn rules, things like governments, um, businesses, you know, you know, things in power, things very, very traditionally, um, you know, Saturn is that, um, planet of, you know, discipline that really, you know, lays down the foundations and also is uh, restriction and the low road of Capricorn is complaining and victimizing, oh, it's such a hard life, it's such a hard, you know, experience, when really it's, you know, just um, really having that ownership and really, um, you know, you, you know, just serving and giving. And really being um, the best and very, uh, you know, high on the quality. So, um, working hard and success, quality, um, being the one to turn to, being the shoulder to lean on if someone needs help or someone, you know, needs something done or, you know, needs help with you know, some huge thing in life or, you know, whatever, they're very, very loyal to their families and whoever, you know, and I would think, you know, that they would expect, you know, similar things in return. Um, very, very hard and loyal um, workers. It's a very loyal sign, especially if you put it with Moon and Scorpio. Cardinal energy, cardinal energy is initiating energy. It starts off uh, the season, planting a new seed, coming forth with a new um, uh, energy of uh, winter, the new year. Um, leadership, very, very strong energy. Um, laying foundations, you know, this 
I mean, you're laying the foundations, um, you know, again, a builder of the Zodiac. Um, and so there's going to be a cardinal grand cross between Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. These four cardinal signs, remember Aries is cardinal spring, March 21st through April 19th. Cancer is the beginning of summer, June 21st through July 22nd. Libra is September the 22nd through uh, October the 22nd. And Capricorn is December 22nd through January um, 19th. So, and, and then January 20th is the cusp. Well, we have Aries, which is, you know, very strong, um, get up and go fire energy, which, you know, doesn't want to be, you know, um, told what to do, really. Uh, the, the fire starters, um, you know, they really have that spark to them. And Cancer is the mother, the nurturer, initiating the family, really, really caring and putting his life in with, um, with the family really, you know, connected to their roots and everything like that. You know, in the bottom of the chart, Libra is relationships with others. How are we going to be diplomatic? How are we going to find peaceful um, solutions? And what is the lighter and more beautiful side of life? And of course, we're talking about Capricorn. So Sun in Capricorn, Mercury in Capricorn, we think very practically uh, and grounded about things really getting serious about various areas uh, in our lives and what works and, you know, thinking uh, in that sort of way and what we want to put forward. Venus, planet of love or values, um, relationships, what we're attracted to in Capricorn, all the finest wines and um, uh, you know, all those types of things, and, you know, just, uh, there's so many things with that, and Pluto in Capricorn, which is changing our governments, you know, and you're seeing in the last degrees of it, that shift of all of that until uh, Aquarius, there may be things that are unexpected, new things just, just change, things that happen, um, but, you know, instead of just being resistant toward the change, welcome it in and take it as an opportunity to grow and, you know, you know, you're provided with op this opportunity for a good reason to implement this or to, um, look at this and to, and, and do a certain way because maybe you never looked at this in a certain way, which would it really be a great benefit for you to look at this certain situation in this certain way? Um, you know, life happens, change happens, and that change is for the better. Um, what are you devoted to? What do you want? And what will you do to get it? What are the things that you're you know, um, I'm devoted to what are your goals and all of those types of things. Um, so, you know, really huge things, setting them in motion. Um, you know, there's going to be, you know, we have this new moon, full moon in cancer, you know, the government and, and working versus the family, um, January 17th, which is a, um, you know, personal family day for me. So Capricorns, you know, also are very witty, seeing things for what they truly are because they're realists, um, you know, laugh and grow, um, you know, when something seems to be a challenge or difficult, and, you know, because everybody makes mistakes, you're going to, um, make a mistake if something doesn't go according to plan or, you know, this happens, that happens, you know, then laugh at it because nothing can be perfect. Um, and then finally, the symbolism of Capricorn, which is the goat. 
um, climbing up that mountain. Picture the goat climbing up a mountain slowly but surely, one step at a time, persistent, achieving that goal, and never giving up. That is all that I want to say about this new moon. Enjoy it, um, and and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye for